Hello, this is Ethan from Sony Center and R, and this is an explanation of our tower takeover robot. So if we start off with intake, we chose to go with China rollers, basically so we could just not have things snapping and breaking. Uh, we ran um, a triple sprocket, uh, just regular old intake earlier, and we found that it did still snap occasionally, and we just wanted to prevent that from happening, given best of one. Um, so if we walk through it, uh, we have these rollers here, which are actually quite interesting. We used these aluminum one bys here to increase compression on the front roller so we could have a nice glide up the rack. So we want a cues to float up the rack instead of just kind of getting shoved into the rack, um, which would actually increase the efficiency, allowing us to run 200 RPM um, China rollers instead of just 100 RPM like most people do. Um, if we move on to the top of the intake, we have our deep plate here, our four bar intake. Um, and basically, we, we iterated on this part a lot. If we look into the insides of this, we uh, use lathe standoffs instead of uh, screw joints just for strength. We were snapping screw joints earlier in the season, so we really wanted to um, make sure that this part would never break. So we used the lathe standoffs in there and we drilled out those bearings and it pivots like that. If we go into the top of it, you see we have a potentiometer and basically what that's for is detecting if there's a cube in the intake. So if a cube is intake, the, the intake spreads just a tad. So we, we would know using potentiometers are pretty, uh, they have a lot of value. So then both of these intakes spreading apart would give you a pretty accurate assumption of whether there is a cube in the robot or where it is in the intake. So that was really that would have been really useful um, for outtaking and knowing where a cube was and whether to outtake for autonomous. But unfortunately, we never really got to ta the time to implement that. So we just used degrees on the socket. Um, if we talk about our cube clamp, it's actually just simple. These two standoffs with cut rubber links just grab the inside of the uh, cubes. And I was actually just, and when it comes down, when the, when the uh, lift comes down, it just spreads out the four bar that the, that the rubber link is on. Um, I'll do that one more time. And yeah, so that the cube clamp was just really simple and it actually left a lot of room for error and was just really good geometry wise. Um, we didn't have to like spit down, spit down and lift up at the same time, like most people had to do with the lever. Uh, we got a lot of freedom having this type of cube clamp. Um, if we work our way back, I guess we had the tray. If we move the tray up, what's really cool here is the tray itself spreads out the four bar. So if I, you can see that it's starting to spread the more that I, I push out the tray. So now I fully pushed out the tray. Sorry, I only have two hands and it spreads out the intake completely. So we get a really nice drop off of cubes for autonomous. Um, and we're, and it's just like, that part of the robot is just really, really consistent. Um, we basically built that part of the robot for autonomous. Um, and I guess that part's pretty obvious. It just lets go of the cubes at a, around like 75 degrees or something like that. Um, if we move back into the robot, we have um, our tray mechanism, which is nothing special, but it's interesting build quality wise. Um, so basically, we our robot is 25 wide in order to better to do stacking better. So we need to, we need to figure out a good way of fitting this whole gearbox here. So what we did instead of just like doing a bunch of weird stuff is we just decided to offset the gearbar gearbox slightly, which allows allow us to put a motor right there. Um, and yeah, we also wanted to use a screw, a screw joint in here instead of just a regular old axle, just for stability. And in order to do that, these two C channels had to come really close. So what we did is we cut open a C channel and basically put a gear inside and then sandwiched it with a plate. So that way we, we Get the strength of the c-channel and we just get a really small space which would allow us to use a screw joint 
Um, the rubber banding's pretty average, except for the fact that it's all snapped. Um, but yeah, we didn't really even need it. Like our, our trip, what was also interesting is we found that we didn't have to put the lever arm all the way down. We also could not put it all the way down because of those motors are there, but this actually allowed us to have faster trays than most people. Um, but back to this. If we talk about our drive, I think that is one of the most interesting parts of our robot. We're actually running a six wheel drive, which is very interesting. And using this 169 track, uh, traction wheel, which utilizes a sprocket instead of um, a sprocket instead of just like a normal wheel, you can't, it's hard to push. It's even harder, to, it's actually, it's harder to push on foam because everything sinks in, but you could tell that it's the same level of these Omni wheels because I could push it on this glass table. You can see traction marks, da da da. Um, we're running 257 on the drive, which is um, a 36 tooth to an 84 tooth, and those mo both those motors are 600 RPM. You can see that gearbox there. Uh, so these traction wheels were actually extremely helpful for us. It helped us um, with autonomous. We weren't drifting side to side and we were just driving perfectly straight. Uh, when we were scoring on towers, people couldn't just shove us sideways and just prevent us from scoring on towers. Um, there's just a lot of uses. More accurate autonomous was a good benefit. This thing, this thing overall was just super beneficial. Um, it was easier to play defense. Like if you wanted to prevent someone from going to their zone and scoring, you could just come in at, like sideways and they couldn't push you so, because I'm heavy. So that worked out really well. If we come to our lift, I'll put that down. We have a three axis gyro down there. I love that thing. If we come to our lift, um, I guess nothing too special. We have, um, we had to raise this part up just a tad. So that way we could have a closer to 90 degree angle with our, um, with our intake. Um, we have the um, contact. We have some really beefy contact bearings here, which are necessary for this type of four bar because early season, we didn't have these contact bearings. And what would happen is the whole arm would flex instead of the four bar flexing. So these contact bearings are super duper nice. Um, when it comes to how we actually did like the lift part of the robot, we actually did that quite interestingly. We have a four bar mechanism here, which I really like with an I-beam going across, which is just a bunch of C channels sandwiched together. And what that allows for is, I don't think I'll really be able to show it that well with my hands, but you have this really, instead of depending on your back brace for um, for up and down slop, you have that brace there, which prevents it from basically bending. You can't really offset this guy from that guy. Um, so that's really nice. Also having this type of linkage here, having this makes the um, rubber banding a lot nicer. For example, like we're getting max tension right here, but as we go up, this angle gets closer to 90. So we get a, a lot more of a linear rubber band pulling, which would allow us to probably run one to seven, 200 RPM if we had time to actually do that. Um, if we go to the back of our robot, we didn't have a ton of room for bracing across for, for the arms for the back. So we just did a box channel of steel half C and that worked good enough. It was pretty nice actually. Just screw joints here. We, one interesting thing that we did is we used um, 36 tooth gears as bearings in a lot of different places. And the advantage, I've been asked that a lot, like why do we do that? Because it's expensive, but it's actually quite worth it because you, it's possible to have the, uh, the screw joint hole smaller than a bearing hole. And it's also fatter than a bearing. So you're getting a lot less slot by um, using these types of, by using these as bearings for your lift. Um, so it's a pretty good trade-off. If we come back to here, we got the back of our tray. Um, our deploy is pretty simple. We have this hinge just made out of plate and stuff. Uh, there are bands would come around here. Unfortunately, they all snap, so I'm just no rubber, rubber bandless. Um, this would just sit here and this part would just slide into the standoff there. I'm not gonna do it because I'm lazy. And then we push cubes up and this part would just deploy. So all of that was just really simple and we did it that way. So that way 
the deep boy can never really break on us because again best of one and so that was the whole robot was basically just designed around consistency and that's why we only had a two section deploy because once you're getting into three sections you're getting into the possibility of a deploy going wrong if we come to our slider we knew we wanted 10 cubes we we just strategized around it and we knew that you only really needed to do 10 cubes to win a match because well 10 of every cut if you get 10 of every color hypothetically um, plus Auton, it's an automatic win if you do the math. So that's why we have a 10 cube robot compared to an 11 or 12 or 13 or 14 or 15, like you crazy people. Um, but if we talk about our slider, one of the things that we realized we had to do in December is we had to get three cubes with a one section slider. So that was kind of an interesting endeavor. Um, one of the biggest problems was friction. Um, how do we get this really long slider with low friction because wait um and how we did how the execution part is actually quite interesting we have this polycarb rail and what that allows for is to relieve stress on this point which is where the bearings are um so basically what happens right is cubes come here force goes down and this whole part pivots along these bearings and then this part which is a roll which is a roller gets pushed into the polycarb um, and since it's a roller, it's still pretty low friction instead of getting like pushed into like the upside of a bearing on the other side. So this really decreased friction as the uh, things slide it up. Um, we use lathe standoffs just for smoothness. Um, we also did some interesting things with the lathe standoffs. We made these little, um, the word is not coming to me right now, but little fillets. Yeah, fillets. Uh, let me see if I can focus in on them. We made little fillets using pencil sharpeners, so so that way um, it would go through the bearings really nicely without any little bumps. Um, we had to really tune this, especially because our intake is 200 RPM, we didn't want to stall it out. Um, our walls, we figured out we had to make stronger after Google uh, because we were dropping cubes in finals. So what we did is we uh, did this really cool um, cut one by triangle so we basically cut off the one by with a well it's a half c and then we cut it off um you, a lot of it off using a bandsaw and then we just did um a triangle here and then put polycarb on it just so things wouldn't fly out and this was just like a really strong way to keep cubes in like we weren't dropping cubes at all at states which was uh really epic and i was really happy about so i'm gonna put this back uh if we come down to here this is just normal um anti-tit slider but pretty simple uh you have a nylon spacer you have um, a nylon spacer and then the two different types of black spacers and that spacing works really nicely um the spacers need to free spin and then you get this really nice just sliding with the rack and it's really just low friction there's a rubber band down there that i don't want to show you because it's really hard to get look at I don't think you can really see it, but it would, or if I even have it on right now, but it would wrap around a wheel before the match. And then if you drove forward, this camera needs to focus. If you drove forward, um, then the, the anti-tip would just shoot straight up. Um, otherwise, some design philosophies around this robot was, it was basically just built around consistency everything we did we wanted to have consistent because we didn't want anything failing during the match and nothing really did during matches like a lot like we've never been just like dead during a match like unable to stack we've always been able to do something and that was one of the strengths and one of the reasons i think we won google um so yeah and good luck and i think it's change up change up yeah change up I probably just totally screwed that up, but yeah. And here is just a shot of the robot for you nerds. Because we're all nerds here. All right, bye and good luck.